So in the previous video, we were doing the forward reverse contactor, uh, but we did the open loop in that we were just looking at the output of the actual bit in the PLC and using that as our holding contact, provide another path of logic to keep our reverse coil on. The problem was that we didn't see anything out in the field. We couldn't see whether the contactor had actually pulled in, and we also didn't have anything on the overload. The overload was over here, and the normally closed contact could kick out our forward reverse coils, uh, but we didn't have a signal to tell us in the PLC program that an overload had occurred. So we need a number of different uh, inputs here, guys, in order to create that closed loop. So the first thing we need is a holding contact on the forward coil. So I'm going to make use of the normally open contact on my forward coil. Then I'm going to make use of the normally open contact on my reverse. And then because I've used the normally closed contact on the overload, I'm going to use the normally open contact on the overload as well. Okay, each of those guys is going to go into uh, my inputs here. So for my forward coil, the holding contact is uh, input number five. My reverse is input number six. And my overload is input number seven. Beautiful. Okay, obviously I've got three and four here, but I'm not showing them in the diagram. Um, I've also got uh, other common connections. So my common connections have to be joined together so that I have a path back. On the previous video, I had changed the, uh, the color there to blue for my wiring, uh, but I forgot to jumper my common back to uh, the zero volts. So again, if I had a, a common here, that fed each of these guys, or it was a return for these guys, I need to put a jumper from this common over to here. And that's a, one of the things that will screw up your uh, your program, in that if you don't provide a path back to the negative of your power source, then the signal will be coming into these input terminals, but because this isn't joined to the common, it doesn't actually see that voltage on the PLC. So just make sure that you've joined up all your commons there. Okay, now we need to bring, I've sourced each of these guys. Sourcing meaning that I've just provided a positive voltage to each of these bad boys. Positive voltage coming from this terminal right here on my PLC. Again, the PLC uh, may have like a, a 120 volt source. And when you put that 120 into the PLC, it has a rectifier circuit that provides you with 24 volts DC that you can use for your inputs. In this case, I'm doing a sourcing and that the positive is going to each of my switches and I'm switching the positive. The PLC already has a reference to the negative here. So let's draw each of these guys into our inputs. And then each of these individual contacts are going to go to their own separate inputs. So we're ripping out all of the components out of our ladder diagram here and putting individual inputs and individual outputs and the only thing that will determine how these guys affect our outputs will be the PLC. All right, so then we got to do our addressing there. So the addressing for uh, the forward input is going to be on the Tweedo suite is going to be percent input zero. And I've physically wired it to number five. So I'm going to put it into number five. There we go. Uh, this guy I have wired to my input terminal number six. And this guy right here, I'm going to get percent input 0 0.7. Excellent. Okay, and that's everything that I need in order to create a closed loop control on my program now. These contacts right here, let me show you where they are on the actual contact or on the overload relay. Okay, so I'm using the, the Schneider or Telemechanique IEC contactors. Uh, and the normally open contact that I just used as the holding contact is this terminal right here. So I have a wire, my positive wire going to one side of that contact. And then the other side of that contact, this normally open, is going to my input. Okay. Within there, obviously, there is a normally open contact that when the contactor changes state, it will close and send a signal into the PLC. 
Okay, over here on my reverse, I've got again the normally open here. Coming from there, I'm going to a separate input on the PLC. So I'm actually looking at the the state of that contactor. I need to see that that relay has actually, or the contactor has actually pulled in. When it pulls in, then that contact will actually close, and then I'll send a signal into the PLC. So I'm no longer relying on a bit of information in the software. I'm relying on something out in the field to say that the coil, so the coil is right here. Come on. Windows not working with me. There we go. So my coil is right there. Once it gets juiced up, then it will pull in and will stay the change the state of that contact there. Okay, so on the overload, I have made use of this normally closed contact right here. So in doing so, I have that guy uh, in line with each of my outputs. So let me just redraw. I've got my forward output, then I've got my reverse output, and both of those are sharing a common normally closed overload contact. So that if this contact opens, then neither of these contactors, being these coils right here, will get current, and that will turn off the motor. But I also need to send a signal, so that contact is right there, right? So I've made use of that contact, and that contact is on my AC side here. But I also need to send a signal into the PLC. So I've, on the IAC, I also have a normally open contact here. So I'm going to make use of that, and again, I'm going to put positive to one terminal there. And then from the other terminal, I'm going to go to an input on the PLC. So this overload will do two things for me. Uh, it will, this isn't drawing all that well, let me just show you where these connections are, right? So this contact right here would be right there, and then this contact right there would be right there. So that if it, if it opens, it's going to take out the AC portion of, of my uh, outputs. But in addition to that, it's also going to send a signal into the PLC. All right, so hopefully that's clear. Let's go back to the program. We'll change our addressing and drop in those different inputs that we decided on. So what do we need to do? We need to uh, change this from the Q, from this output bit, to an actual input. So we're no longer looking at uh, the forward coil. We're actually looking at an input from this contact on the forward contactor. So we had uh, percent input 0 0.5. Okay, and we said that that was our forward forwarding contact. Okay, we're also going to do the same over here. Rather than relying on a piece of software to tell us that it's on, we're going to look out in the field and my reverse holding contact is physically wired to input, so percent input 0 0.6. Very nice. Okay. In addition to that, I'm still looking at this bit of information here for the reverse coil, but I can actually look at this contact and have the opposite instruction so that when the reverse coil is off, then this looks for the presence of no voltage. Obviously, if the reverse coil is off, there's no voltage being impressed on that input terminal. So I can also address this as percent input 0 0.6 and then I'm no longer relying on that bit of information I'm now looking out in the field and just using the opposite instruction that takes a little while to get your head around in it we're using the same input here a normally open contact but we're using different instructions at different points in the actual program okay so we will relabel this as our reverse holding contact And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to make this as our forward holding contact. Rather than looking at that Q bit, that output bit there, we're actually going to look at the input, and the input for the forward holding contact is input 0 0.5.
Beautiful. So now we've actually got uh, some signals coming into the PLC to tell us that the contactor has actually turned on and has gotten power and is working. The other thing we need to do is throw in our overloads as well. So our overload is going to percent input 0 0.7 and I'm going to place the overload uh, right here and right here. Now if the overload is still perfectly fine and hasn't been tripped, then this contact will be in its rest state. In its rest state, meaning that there has not been an overload, then the 24 volts is going to come over here and stop at that contact. So there will be no voltage impressed on that input number 7. So I'm going to use an instruction that looks for no voltage, and the instruction that looks for no voltage is an examine if open. So I'm going to do identical instructions on either one. And for each of these guys, that is our overload contact. Okay, I haven't left myself too much room, so I'm going to put that right here and right here. And I'm going to put the address just below. So the address for that overload contact is percent input 0 0.7. And down here, remember that I can use my inputs as many times as I want. So I can monitor that this has not closed or that the overload has not tripped uh, in a number of different places. But we can see here that I have the wrong instruction. So let me just change that. So we'll change that to an examine if open. Okay, and now we can walk through. We need uh, that stop button, push button to be remaining in its closed state, which means that there will be voltage there. We need someone to actually press this forward push button, which means that uh, we will monitor when that voltage goes into the input. We want to see that the reverse holding contact is still open. So we're going to use an examine of open. And for the overload contact, we're going to examine that this contact is still open as well. So we're going to use an examine if open as well. If all these are true, we'll turn on our forward coil. And to monitor that the forward coil has actually pulled in, then this contact will close, and we're using an examine if closed, or examine if one, or examine if there's voltage to this terminal to provide us with that closed loop to keep us with the forward coil energized when we release that forward push button. All right, so the one thing, the two things that will screw up is that I am using one input here as a normally open contact, but I'm using separate instructions within the actual program. And again, over here in the overload, we're usually used to seeing the normally closed being used. It's already been used over here on the AC side. I'm going to use the opposite contact there, the normally open. And I'm going to just look to see that it's still open and that the overload has not tripped.